Raise your hand if you've ever met someone and the second you met them, you hated them. Like you just did not like them. <laughs> okay. And how many of you ever met someone and the second you met them, oh, they were like your best friend ever. You just loved them to bits. Anyone ever have someone like that? Yeah, yeah. And how many of you have ever met someone and you really, really liked them. You just, oh my gosh, they were so good. And then you got to know them and you're like, ooh, I should stay away from this person. This is not a good situation. Or sometimes you meet someone and you're like, oh, yuck, I don't think so. And then you get to know them and they're wonderful. Well, the reason that happens, I think, is because often our first impressions of people, well, oftentimes we make our choices based on things that don't really matter. Like, um, we often judge people and we have preconceived notions of what we think something is. For instance, how many of you judge people based on their teeth? Like whether they're clean or they've brushed their teeth or they got stuff in their teeth. Hmm? How many of you do that? Or judge people and whether or not they have clean clothes on or dirty clothes. And someone who wears clean clothes or, or, or dirty clothes frequently, you might have a, a reaction to that person. Or shoes. How many of you are really into shoes and you judge people based on the kind of shoes that they wear? Um, some people judge people about hair, like what their hair looks like. Whether or not um, they like what their hair looks like or if they think it looks strange or it isn't what they think it should look like. People judge people for all sorts of things. The color of their skin, their accent, their dialect, what they sound like, color of their eyes. We have all sorts of things that we like and we don't like. And we tend to snap judge people. Now, sometimes that snap judgment makes us step away from someone. And sometimes it makes us step towards them. But just because we've had a snap judgment doesn't mean that what we think is true of that person is true of that person. So this is a story about that. This is a story about well, you'll see. It's called the debate in sign language. And it goes like this. Once there was a king who thought he was extremely handsome. Oh yes, he was. He loved looking at himself in the mirror. He loved how beautiful he was. And, and he looked around his world and he decided that some of his advisors weren't lovely to look at. And so he made them wear makeup. And for those whose faces could not be helped with makeup, he made them wear masks. And he looked around at his servants and he realized he felt the same way about them. So either they were pretty or they wore masks. And he had mirrors all through his castle so he could watch himself as he went down the halls because he was so lovely to look at. He had mirrors in his dressing room so he could watch himself as his servants dressed and undressed him. And he had mirrors in the throne room so he could watch himself as he sat on his throne. Now, once a day, he would uh, dispense justice to his people. They could come and talk to him. But his advisors knew he was incapable of helping someone who didn't look good. So everybody was given the exact same robe and the exact same mask and they'd come out and they would tell the king their needs. And when he could just look at them without judging whether or not they were pretty or not pretty or whatever, he was a very good king. But the second he saw something he didn't like, he couldn't help you at all. Well, it got to the point where the king loved looking at beautiful things so much that he got tired of looking out the window because some days it was warm and sometimes it was rainy or gray. It was just too unpredictable. So he had all the windows covered up and then he put tapestries on front of all the windows. So for a decade, for 10 years, he stayed inside of his beautiful castle, surrounded by beautiful things, and he was happy. One day, as he sat upon his throne, he thought, I am beautiful. <laughs> my advisors are beautiful. My servants are beautiful. My people, when they come for justice, why, they're beautiful too. I bet my kingdom is beautiful. I haven't seen it in a while. I want to see it. Well, when his advisors heard he wanted to see his kingdom, they got very nervous because his kingdom was not beautiful. It was just... It was just outside. And they thought, you know, if the king sees that his kingdom isn't beautiful, there's really no telling what he will do. 
you know, maybe he'll beggar the kingdom trying to buy enough whatever to fix it. And they got an idea, said, you know what, we, we, we think we know how to deal with this. So they had um, craftsmen come and craft marble stairs coming out of the castle, and then a gorgeous, gorgeous marble road that led to the gates of the town. And the gates were strong iron gates, they were black gates, and they weren't sure the king would think they were fancy enough, so they gilded them with gold. So they didn't make gold gates, because gold is a really soft metal. Anybody could push that through. They needed the strong iron, so they just gilded it, so it was just covered in gold. And, and they looked at all the houses on either side of the road, that marble road, and they thought, ah, he's not gonna like these houses. Because they were small, you know, small shops and whatever. So they got some huge cutouts of fake mansions, and they put the fake mansions up and down the road. And they were just the front, right? They were just like fitted on the front. And they slid into each other. And then they thought, ah, oh, the people. So they handed out robes and masks and they to the number of people and they said, here's what you're gonna do. When the king comes down this road, what you do is you like stand in front of these houses and you just pose. All right, then the king will see the beautiful road and the beautiful people, the beautiful houses, the beautiful gate. He'll go back into the castle and we might not see him again for another decade. And everyone thought, okay, that's good. So the day arrived, they got everything ready. The king emerged, it was a sunny day. And all of the houses were there and all the people were there and the king thought, wow, he went down the marble stairs, wow, he went down the marble road, wow, he looked at the beautiful houses, wow, he looked at the beautiful gate, yes, he came back, he stood upon that beautiful marble way and he said, this is wonderful, I want to do it every day. So every day that the weather would allow, they would set up this elaborate fake scene and the king would walk down to the gate and come back and go inside. It took two hours. Everything stopped for two hours while they set up this really elaborate fake thing. Now, I don't know how about you. I don't know about you, but when there's something I really do not want to do that gets boring, sometimes I don't do it as well as I should, especially if I have to do it every single day. You know what I'm talking about? Well, King was coming down the road and people had, had well, they were supposed to push those houses together and slot them, but someone had not bothered to do that and there was a gap. And the king, who'd never seen the gap, looked down and there, there was a dirt road leading off of the marble road. And he stopped and said, what is that? His advisors looked and went, um, it's a gutter. It's a gutter. Clearly, uh, uh, it's just a gutter. It's made of dirt and all the roads in your kingdom are made of marble. Huh, said the king, but it looked like a road to him. But now that he'd seen it, they couldn't cover it up again. He would forever be looking for it. So now they had to keep that particular gap there. And every time they stopped, he would say, gutter, that's a gutter, okay. Well, because now it was exposed, there was another task that had to be done. Before the king came out of the castle, someone had to come and brush all the footprints off that road so the king wouldn't know it was a road. But of course, eventually someone got careless and the king looked down, that's a road, there's a footprint there. No, no, no. Uh, uh, someone must have slipped off the road into the gutter and then they got back up. So there's only one footprint. It's it's fine. Well, the king was very suspicious about this. I mean, he was vain and ridiculous, but he wasn't dumb. And so the next time he went, he got just in front of his advisors and then he slowed down and they were going a little fast. They passed him and he jumped off the road. They said, wait, but it was too late because he had taken those two steps and he saw around the back of those houses and he could see that they were fake. He was furious. He grabbed one and pulled it one way and he threw the other one the other way and the houses fell down like dominoes. And the people jumped out of the way and their robes came off and their masks were askew and the last house scraped the paint right off one side of that gate and the king got to see his kingdom for the first time. He was very unimpressed. You have been lying to me. Okay, a little bit, your majesty, but it was, I don't care why you did it. Look at this place. First thing you do is you rip all these houses out and you build mansions like you should have. They said, your majesty, there aren't enough people in your kingdom to have that many mansions. Well, then I don't want them here, he said. What else are you hiding from me? And before they could stop him, the king set off down the dirt road. And he went through the gates on the other side and, and they, of course, were just black iron. Gold, I want gold gates, he announced. And out he went into the countryside. Now, in this kingdom, you had to pay to go to school. So the poorest people could not afford such a thing. And he passed the manor houses, which he liked, but he didn't like the little smaller houses. And, and the further out he went, the people had no education and, and, and they lived in squalor and, and small houses. They barely had enough to eat and he was disgusted by the all of it. 
And he stopped and said, who are these disgusting, dirty people? They said, your majesty, these are your poorest citizens. They barely have enough to eat, but they work so hard. They are worth nothing. Gather them up and throw them out. We're going to do a house cleaning here. Puh. And they said, your majesty, you cannot throw out the oldest citizens or, or the poorest or the sickest. I don't like sick people. I don't like old people. I don't like poor people. Get rid of them all. They don't belong here. They should find someone else to take care of them. I'm not going to do it. And he began to march back towards the castle and they begged him, your majesty, these people have worth and dignity. Please don't treat them like this. If they were dignified, they wouldn't live like this. It's disgusting. It's all they can afford. That's not my fault, not my problem. Do you expect the government to take care of you? Honestly. Back to the castle. Well, they kept begging. They kept begging for the king to listen, to see that, that, that all people have worth and dignity and all people deserve better than what they, that these poor people had, but that's all they had. Finally, the king got sick of it. He said, you know what? You think these people are worth something and I know they're not and I can prove it. I said, how, how would you prove it, your majesty? Easy enough. You have one of those disgusting, dirty people come to my castle. Three days from now, we're going to have a debate. I'm going to ask questions and they're going to answer the questions. And if they can't answer them to my satisfaction, out they go. Oh, he said, and I'm going to ask those questions in sign language. I'm going to make up the signs. I said, Your Majesty, that's hardly fair. You think these people are worth something. You think they have dignity. You think they have some smarts or something. Let them prove it. And if they can't, I want all of them out. Well, when word went out that the most learned man in the kingdom wanted to debate one of the poorest people, the poor, the elderly, those people who were not well, but there were people caring for them, family members, they're packing them all up to take them out, to take them out, to find some place to be. They, there would be a caravan of vagabonds, wanderers, leaving behind what little they had. But there was one man who thought he would, he would try to face the king. He was a chicken farmer. Yes, indeed, he had two chickens. And he got up in that morning and he put on his best pants, which had a lot of chicken poop on them, and he cleaned off as best he could, and he put on his best shirt, and he didn't try to clean that off, because if he tried to rub that shirt, it would have changed colors. It was covered in chicken poop. And he left home. He didn't have any shoes he never had had. And off he went, and as he was passing a little river, he looked in and realized his hair was a mess. So he got some water, and he gave himself a hair helmet. And he went on down the road. And when he finally got to the castle, big marvel steps, he went up the steps. He's terrified. Well... The courtiers took one look at him and realized uh, they gave him fresh shirt, fresh, first fresh shirt he'd ever had. And they gave him fresh pants. It was amazing. Huh. Clean cloth on his skin. And they gave him a pair of shoes, which he didn't really like because, well, he had really giant flat feet and those shoes were a little small. But no one had any shoes that were big enough to fit him. And they got him cleaned up and they said, well, you'll have to do. And he went to see the king. The king was sitting up on his throne. He said, this, this is who's going to debate me? And they said, yes, your majesty. Fine threw his ermine off and he came down the steps and he stared at the chicken farm and he said, very well, let us begin. And the king did that. And the chicken farmer did that. And the king said, that's the right answer. And then the king did this. And the chicken farmer did this. And the king said, that's the right answer. And then the king opened up his beautiful silk coat and he pulled out a silk handkerchief. And he unwrapped that handkerchief and in the middle of it was a piece of moldy cheese. The chicken farmer touched his new coat in hopes and realized, oh, he had managed to transfer the most important thing he had on him over to his new coat and he reached in the pocket and pulled out an egg. And the king stumbled back to the dais he said, that's the right answer. Chicken farmer, you have done a thing I did not think was possible. Go and be welcome in my kingdom and I will do as you say. Chicken farmer bowed, turned around and ran out of there as fast as he could in those small shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he got those shoes off. He was going to change his clothes over, but the courtiers were, were weeping, and they said, no, you keep the new clothes. And he went home with a new, brand new set of clothes. He left those little shoes back there, though.
And all the courtiers gathered around the king. They said, what happened? We were here. We saw the whole thing. What happened? The king said, it was amazing. I told that chicken farmer I had two kingdoms, the rich, the poor, the, the healthy, the sick, the young, the old. They were two different kingdoms. And they could be apart, rich and poor, and nobody would care. And he told me I had one kingdom, that we were one people, and that all of us were human. Huh? What about the thing with the, whew, I told him, the poor and the sick and the ugly and the old. Why, they were like dust and I could just throw them to the wind and they'd blow away and no one would care. And he held up his fist to show me that as long as we stood together, rich or poor, old, strong, weak, when we stand together, we are strong. And if there's anything that comes for one of us, all of us can stand against it as long as we stand together. What about the last thing with the cheese? I told him that the poor were like mold on cheese. They were nothing. They crumbled it away. Only the good sweetheart, only the good sweetheart was the best of us. And what about the egg? Well, he took out the egg to show me that all of us are in one skin. Always it was about the one skin, human skin. And as long as we stay together and fight for each other, we can always be reborn into something better. And all of the courtiers began to weep. Back at the chicken farmer's house, completely different story. They said, what happened? He said, I don't know. They said, what about the debate? He said, there was no debate. That man tried to kill me. He tried to poke out my eyes, so I blocked him. And then he tried to slap me up my side my head, and I told him if he did, I'd knock his teeth out. And I must have scared him, because <laughs> he took out his lunch. So I just took out mine. On that day, the richest and most privileged of the people speak of the day when one of the poorest out thought the king. But the poor people, they had a hero, a hero they speak of to this day, a man who stood up against tyranny and out fought the king. Perception is everything. What you see and how you act depends on what you know. And the more knowledge you have, the more ability you have to make choices and decisions. Your snap judgments aren't always the right ones. So think before you act, I guess, and learn before you do. <laughs> this festival is an important fundraiser for Camp Bethel in Thin Castle, Virginia. So if you are enjoying yourself, please consider a donation at the link below. Thank you. We hope the festival will be back home in person next year and need your help in getting the camp ready to reopen as soon as possible for summer camps, guest groups, and special events like the festival. Please click on the link below and make your contribution toward the work, the fun, and the fellowship that find a home at Camp Bethel. Thanks for watching and thank you for your gift.